every Sunday kasi is our game night. So, we play with our board games, either our um, uh, Monopoly, uh, Uno, Cards, uh, Snake and Ladders, um, Scrabble, yan. Mamaya yan. So, excited na si Ewell dyan for game night. One of the games we're playing is Uno Stacco. And it's like Jenga. I don't know how to play Jenga. How do you play that? But but it's like playing Uno, but here, um, the objective is that wag mag, mag, wag ma, mag crumble. Um, kaya naiinis si Yuel kay Boaz, kasi Boaz ay yag! <laughs> Pagkakasama si Boaz, tutuloy, Boaz, I just made that! And, and so, we're making him busy while uh, we're playing that. The objective is that so that the, that will not crumble, not fall. And usually, there's a key piece, right? Meron yan somewhere here in the middle uh, or somewhere here at the, at the back. Um, actually, tama rin eh, medyo sa corner. Pag hinugot mo yon at mali, it's gonna crumble. Malalaglag talaga siya. That's why you have to be, to, just like in Jenga as well, you have to carefully plan what to get first. Kasi pag nakuha mo na yung key piece, it's gonna crumble. That's the same idea of our series for the next four weeks. We're gonna talk about Jesus as the cornerstone. And sa panahon ngayon, uh, of course, modern day engineering, the same, I think the same principle still stands, pero wala na talaga ng cornerstone. But we went to Israel, there are the, the, the tourist, tourist guides are, are showing us, yan, yan yung cornerstone. Uh, paano nyo mamalalaman nasa, yan yung cornerstone? Nasa? Corner. Very intelligent. Good job, children. So, nasa corner siya. And if you take that stone out, a very important portion in the building, then tingnan mo, ano? isang stone lang yan. With probably hundreds of stones. In that house or that building, that structure, isang stone lang yan, but you take that out, And the whole, uh, the whole building falls, crumbles. Uh, pretty much like this. Merong itong second floor na to, may mga beams yan. Tinago namin yung dalawang beam dito sa stage. Ayan. Kaya nga, pag mapansin nyo, hindi gitna yung stage. Uh, kaya din mabigat dito. Dapat medyo usog pa dito ng konti para mas gitna. Pero... Tinabi namin, sinakto namin sa stage itong dalawang beams. So yan, oh, may beam yan, apat yan. Hindi yung beam toothpaste. No? B-E-A-M is ma. Hindi yun. Uh, mga bima, uh, pillars. Right? And if you remove this, siguro kahit ito lang yung tanggalin mo, try, try to do it now. In fact, we have a live demonstration. Kuguho to. Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
we're not sure. There, things are not sh- sure what, what's the next best, uh, next thing that's gonna happen. Pero isa lang ang sure. Isa lang ang stable. Isa lang ang, ang matatag. Okay? Isa lang ang malupit. At yun yung cornerstone, that is Jesus Christ. So as long as we're gonna put our hope, our trust, our dreams, our plans to the cornerstone, we will be stable and sure as well. Stable and sure as well. Mark chapter 12, buksan nyo yung Bible nyo. Okay, Mark chapter 12, we're gonna be reading chapters, uh, uh, chapters 12, uh, chapter 12 verse 1 to 11. But let's start at the very end. Kasi dito, binang, dito binanggit yung word na cornerstone. Jesus is talking to religious leaders here. He told the parable, the parable that we're gonna talk about later. And then at the end, sabi niya, Have you not read this scripture? And he is quoting Psalms 118 verse 22. Sabi niya, Have you not read this scripture, the stone that the builders rejected? Sabi niyo, rejected. Has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is, it is marvelous in our eyes. Rejected. Sabihin niyo ulit, rejected. Yung iba, hindi niyo masabi na naalala niyo yung time na na-reject kayo. Pastor, may sugat pa. Uh, I'm being rejected. Okay? Ang context ng Mark chapter 12, this verse, like what I've said, If you want to know what's really happening in the verse, but niya sinabi to, bakit niya kinuwento to, bakit ito yung sagot niya, you have to read the chapters ahead. At least one. Mark chapter 11, this is when Jesus cleared the temple. Okay? Um, this was on a Wednesday. Nangyari to ng Wednesday. Sunday, yun yung pumasok siya sa Jerusalem. So imagine, uh, of, uh, you remember, he was in Galilee for most of his, most of the three years, or the past two years. Nandun yung ministry niya. And then he entered Jerusalem, which is the key, key city. Right? People are shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Uh, hinurbad nila yung robe nila, got uh, palace pass, and then and waved it. Okay, and, and, and Monday on, they believed or, or perceived that Jesus is the Messiah. Kasi hindi naman nila gagawin yun kung hindi nila ino-honor si Jesus Christ. And of course, they've heard the, the miracles. Ngayon, Wednesday, pagdating niya sa temple, the temple is the place of worship. Now, kasi kung gusto mo mag-worship, magdadala ka ng whatever, pigeon, goat, sheep, Right? Magdadala ka. Ngayon, ginawang negosyo ng mga tao, kasi kung isipin mo, galing kang Galilee, two days, three days of travel, may dala ka pang ship, di ba abala? Siguro may Facebook ad na, nahihirapan ka ba ang magdala ng ship pag mag-worship? Not anymore. Parang ganon. Bibili ka na lang sa amin. So, so pwedeng bumili ka na lang ng uh, offering. Ngayon, okay naman yon, kasi tinutulungan yung mga tao para maka-worship ng, ng mas madali. Okay? Eh ngayon, na, alam ni Jesus na ginagawang negosyo, so nagalit talaga siya. Nagalit siya, um, pinagahampas niya yung mga tao, yung mga, ay, hindi mga tao, <laughs> yung mga, yung mga tables, uh, pinag, uh, he, he threw it away. Sabi niya, my, my father's house is a place of worship and prayer. And you made it into a den of robbers. Mga magnanakaw. Ngayon, the same people, look at this, guys. The same people who said, Hosanna, Hosanna, is the same people who asked this question to him. By what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you authority to do them? Bakit ka ba? Bakit, bakit mo ba kami pinapatigil? Anong problema mo? Okay, bakit ka ba tilted? Yabang mo, ganyan. Ba't mo ba kami pinapatigil? Eh, kabuhayan namin to. Tiyan mo, kanin, again, Sunday, they worship Him, accepting Him, and now Wednesday, they reject Him. Rejecting His authority. I, I wondered, bakit ba tayo nagre-reject ng authority? 
Bakit? When do we when do we start rejecting authority? When things are not favorable to us anymore. Diba? Uh, I'll give you an example. Yung presidente, pinag-away-awayan pa natin. Away-away pa tayo kung sinong boboto natin. Right? Uh, pero pustahan tayo, pag merong ginawa yung presidente mo, manok mo, na hindi favorable sa'yo, lalaglag mo din yan. Example, teacher ka. Right? Teacher ka, sabi ng presidente, uh, dahil po sa kakungulangan ng budget, babawasan na lang po yung mga uh, sweldo ng teacher, ililipat sa mga nurse. Dahil yung mga nurse ay overwork. Anong sasabihin ng mga teacher? Ay, kinabukasan, pustahan tayo. Pabaksakin, pabaksakin! Tuta, America! Ganun. Iba sa UP, araw-araw, may, hindi naman araw-araw, pero lagi, di ba? Lagi, lagi na lang pabaksakin, pabaksakin. Tapos yung mga nurse, ay, napakatalino nyo po, Mr. President, or Madam President. Napakaganda. Okay? Kailan natin nire-reject ang authority? Kapag ka hindi na pabor sa'yo. Pag hindi na pabor sa'yo, biglang ayaw mo na yung gumawa ng batas. Ayaw mo na yung, yung nag... At sabihin mo na, bakit pa ba kasi ginawa yung batas na yan? Hindi nag-iisip yung mga... Pero pag pabor sa'yo, okay. Pag pabor sa'yo, okay. Mark chapter 12, verse 1 to 11. The official title there, you can see, is the parable of the tenants. Okay? But this is... I made, I made, ito na yung title natin, Jello, sa ating YouTube page. This is actually a murder in the vineyard. Hindi ito yung feel good. Um, so kanina, may, may bago, 9 a.m. Pina, ina, pina-attend ko po kasi nakakatawa daw po. <laughs> Manumang hindi. This is not one of that. Because it's a murder. A shocking murder at the very end. Um, gusto ko yung mga novels ni Agatha Christie. Mga, sino yung babasa ng Agatha Christie? Christie Permin. Yan, meron ba? Yun na lang, okay. Uh, ano yan, mga uh, murder mysteries. I love murder mysteries. Kaya hindi Agatha Christie. Parang, sino ba talaga yung murder? Ito, obvious. But a murder nonetheless. Okay, there's a movie coming up, Death on the Nile. Uh, based on Agatha uh, Christie's book. Yung parables, usually meron yung four themes. It talks about how to treat others. It talks about the characteristic of a disciple. Okay, remember the, remember the parable of the seed and the sower, right? Uh, yung isa napunta sa good ground, sa napunta sa rocky ground. So, characteristic of a disciple, maging good ground ka. Ayan. at para tumubo yung word ni Lord sa'yo. So, characteristic of a disciple, the king and the kingdom of God. Kaya madaming parable starts with, the kingdom of God is like a hidden pearl. Ayan. Kingdom of God is like a net. Ayan. I, I love Jesus' parables. By the way, I love Jesus as a teacher. Okay? I love Jesus uh, because it's not boring. Pag si Jesus, yung pastor nyo, hindi kayo makakatulog. Okay, hindi ko katulad. Yan, tulog na si Kuya. Yan sa likod. Si At kakasimula ko pa lang po. Huwag kasi kayong magpuyat pag Sabado. Okay, minsan hindi ko nakasalanan. Talagang puyat ka. Uh, okay, uh, pero si Jesus, hindi boring. And He uses parables to uh, explain. Parables are normal day stories. Like the parable of the yeast. The parable of the virgins. The parable of the... coin normal normal everyday things okay wala siyang ano the parable of the space trilogy parang si is lewis walang ganun um, and 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 he uses it to make a point most of the time hindi nila maintindihan yung ibig sabihin ng parable pero this time sure ball malinaw <laughs> malinaw to kalagitnaan pa lang alam na ng mga tao kung sino ang tinutukoy ni Jesus this specific parable talks about the judgment of God. Nag-overlap din yung mga parables na yan, but yan yung themes. 
No? Pwede mo ring sabihin na the kingdom of God to. Okay, pwede mo ring sabihin na characters of a disciple, the parable of the tenants. Okay, let's start. Um, I want to divide this into three sections, tong storing to. Number one, the generosity of the owner. The owner of the vineyard. And he began to speak to them in the parables. A man planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a pit for the wine press and built a tower and list it to tenants and went into another country. When Jesus started talking about this, immediately the religious leaders, his hearers, knew that he was referencing Isaiah 5. Pag tinignan natin yung Isaiah 5, kamukhang kamukha. Let's read it. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed it a wine vat in it and he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. We can learn from Isaiah chapter 5 that the owner... of the vineyard is the Lord of hosts or God the Father. Okay? So when Jesus is talking about that in, in Mark, alam na nila, okay, we've heard this. We've heard this story. Okay? Um, pag tinignan nyo kung gaano ka-generous tong owner na to, si God, our Father, siya yung bumili ng lupa, siya yung naghukay, he dug it, siya yung nagtanggal ng stones, Siya yung nagplant ng vines, uh, siya yung nagbuilt ng watchtower, siya yung gumawa ng wine vat, siya lahat. And then he listed it to tenants. Pretty much like the image of Genesis chapter 3 when God created the man. Tama ba? God created Adam, sabi doon, and, and he put the man at the center of the garden to work it and take care of it. Hindi niya pinahirapan si Adam. Adam, may plano ako sa'yo. Una, isipin mo kung ano yon. number one. Number two, trabahuhin mo. Number three, bahala ka sa buhay mo. No! Everything that Adam needs is there. Kaya nga, it gives us an impression na work is not just for provision. Work is not just so that you can eat because lahat naman ng pagkain ni Adam, it's already there. Kumain ka. But I'm giving you a purpose. I'm giving you, a, 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 I'm giving you value. I'm giving you a mission. I'm giving you a job. And that is to take care of it. So, the owner of the vineyard prepared everything for the tenants. But look, ang expectation niya lang is to yield grapes. But, at least in Isaiah 5, again, there's a parallelism here. it yielded wild grapes. Walang kwenta. Yung wild grapes, sobrang sour. Hindi siya masarap um, kainin. Eh, napakatagal. Napakatagal. Hindi siya dalawang taon bago tumubo ang isang ubas. Uh, I mean, from, from zero, from zero, para tumubo ang unang ubas ng vineyard, it's gonna take two years. So imagine waiting for two years and then nothing. No produce of the land. So again, God's giving everything for us in this life so that we will be successful. Everything that we need. Um, if God is calling you to, to, to start this business, to to. be this father, to be this mother, to be this wife, don't worry. God will give you everything you need. God will prepare the way for you so that you will be successful. Ang tanong, ano ang ginawa ng mga tenants? Because after this, he listed to tenants and went it and went into another country. Umalis siya. So again, two years. Now we can see, number two, the evilness of the tenants. 
When the season came, he sent a servant to the tenants to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. Ulit, no? When the season came, after two years, he knew it's harvest time, he sent a servant to get from them some of the fruit of the vineyard. Now, God is the owner. We know this. Um, Israel is the vineyard from Isaiah chapter 5. From this time on, the religious leaders are figuring out, parang pinapatamaan kami ni Jesus dito. So the servants, the tenants are, sorry, the tenants are the religious leaders. Pero you could ca- make a case, it's also us. Tanong, mga kapatid. Sino po dito, uh, pag after daw po ng two years, nag-send siya ng servant para kumuha ng kita or kumuha ng, ano ang tawag dun sa pag namunga yung fruits? Fruits. Harvest. Kumuha ng harvest yung servant. Some, Kuya Arnel, some of the fruit, hindi niya sinabi, akin na lahat! Nang pinagtrabahuan nyo ng dalawang taon, akin na lahat! Wala siya sinabi ganun. Because may kontrata yan. I don't know what's the contract. Maybe parang sa, sa Axi 50-50. But I, 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 I'm collecting now. Tama lang po ba na humingi ang owner ng kita, ng harvest, ng lupa? Sino magsasabing, oo, oh, oh, taas kamay? Yung mga hindi taas come here, explain why. Explain why not come. Ulit, sino dito naniniwala? na tama lang, it's fair, it's just, that the owner will get some, some nga lang eh, taas kamay. Yeah, wala na, magpapaliwanag, taas kamay. Another question. Eh, kung ganun, sabi ko kanina, tayo din, binigay na ni Lord lahat ng kailangan natin. Eh, kung mayabang ka, anong binigay ni Lord? Wala, wala sa akin pinigay si Lord. Sige, bawi ang kanya ng oxygen. Sige, ano, hindi mo kailangan si God? Bawiin kanya ng gravity. Butak sa space. Don't say that to me. So, in that case, tama lang po ba na may expectation? Expectation. Sobrang gigil eh. So, oh, tama lang po ba na may expectation ng Diyos sa atin? Kanina, Joshua, parang, tama lang po ba na sumingil? Yeah! Tama ba may expectation ng Diyos sa'yo? <laughs> tama lang po bang humingi ang Diyos some of your money? Eh, may, na- may nawawala sa Facebook. Ayan, left the group. Left. Tingnan nyo nga, bumaba ba, bro? Bumaba. Live, ayan, nababa. Tama lang po ba na hingi niya ang oras mo every Sunday? Ikaw, nanonood, tama lang ba na tigilan mo muna pamamalansya? Yes, I can see you. Sinasabay mo yung pagpaplansya sa pag-worship. Okay, tigilan mo muna yan. Tama lang naman eh. It's just fair. Because everything that we have is His. Eh kung balik ni Lord, o sige, 90% sa akin, 10% sa'yo. Eh kahit nga, ganun, pwede pa din eh. Bakit? Eh sa kanya naman lahat ng galing to. Eh, sabi ko nga sa'yo, bawi ang kanyang oxygen. Eh kung hindi ka niya patayuin, paralyze ka niya, o oh, makakatrabaho ka ba? Every single day, I hope that we will not forget to say thank you, I'm alive. Uh, kani, kahapon, I was so tired. Kachat ko si Jelo, I was, I was so tired. I was real life the whole day. And then, the, nung gabi, nag, nagturo pa kami sa Baliwag, uh, up Laridel, I was so tired, like 10.30, sabi ko, Jelo, hindi ko na matatapos yung preaching. 
Holy Spirit, do it for me. Just yung Holy Spirit niya. Galing, Rosie. Sabi ko, bro, natutulog talaga ako from 10 to 5. Ay, grabe, sarap nung pagising ko. Lord, thank you for the restful sleep. Thank you for the gift of life. Come on, let's do this. Sana ganun every day. Wag mo, wag mo isang tabi yung paggising mo every day. So ngayon, eto na, nagpadala ng servant para kuhanin yung tama lang namang usapan. Napag-usapan to eh, kontrata to eh. Sa kanya yung lupa, sa lahat ng bayad niyan. At in-enjoy nyo yung lupa na yan for two years. Diyan kayo natulog, di ko alam, ginawa niya, party kayo dyan. It doesn't matter, basta I need the produce. But look at what they did. Verse 3, they took him and beat him and sent him away empty-handed. Imagine the shock. Kayo nga kayo nasa shock eh. <gasps> Ba't ganun sila, Pastor? Wala silang pusa. <laughs> yeah. Binugbog nila. Hello po mga sir. Uh, kukunin ko na po yung um, share ng amo. Anong share? Anong share? <laughs> Pinauwi ng walang pera. Pati pamasahe siguro kinuha eh. Empty handed eh. So umuwi, naglakad pa siya, <laughs> layo. Sent another servant. And he sent to them another servant and they struck him on the head and treated him shamefully. Kumuha ng bato or whatever and then bashed his head. Bam! Baka kinuha pa yung damit. Pinagtawanan. Sent him home shamefully. You know what? I think hindi naman lagi ko itong sinasabi guys. Sino dito ang gigising sa umaga nagpaplanong maging masama? Meron ba? Si kuya lang yan. So, yan. Eh, wala, wala, wala. Meron bang ganon? Gigising ka na. <gasps> ah, sino kayang busiting ko ngayon? Sino kayang nanakawang ko ngayon? Or sinong babae kaya yung di-disrespect? Sino kayang pwede kong ipagpalit kay Carmen? Wala namang ganun. Pero these unguarded moments, right? Siguro pagpunta ng master, hindi sila ready. Ay, servant. Siguro pinabayaan nila yung lupa. So it's not enough na baboy Katulad sa Isaiah, ay, grabe, I'm expecting a good produce eh. Tapos wala sila mapakita to show for. And sa halip na mag-sorry, sa halip na humingi ng tawa, that second chance, they covered it up. And if you think na you can stop it by yourself, guys, Online church, if you think that you can stop sinning by yourself without repentance, you can't. In fact, there's no way to go but up. This escalating evil in our hearts. Because yung first two, they just beat them up. Look at the, 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 the next guy. And he sent another and him they killed. And so with many others, some they beat, some they kill. We think we can stop easy. Eh, kaya ko naman yan eh. Kung, kung sawa na ako sa kasalanan ng to, madali naman bumalik kay God. Iwan ko lang yan, balik ako kay God. It's not simple, pre. You have to decide now when is the stop to start when to start to stop ano ba Tama naman eh when to start to stop to sin barok It's now Because we will become more evil and evil Because the days are becoming more evil and evil Look at that Sin will take you farther than you want to go 
keep you longer than you want to stay and cost you more than you are willing to pay. Parang chicharon niyan, Mark. Kuya Arnel, susumbong ko nga si Carmen. Sir. Pag may bigay kayong chicharon, tinatago yung isa, pinamimigay. Yung chicharon, di ba alam mo namang bawal sa'yo? Right? Um, bubuksan mo yung pack, tapos kakain ka. Hindi, mga tatlo lang. Ayan, sarap. Alam mo namang isang isang kain mo, isang hukay sa kamatayan, di ba? Isang dagdag sa cholesterol level. Yung sarap eh. Ano sasabihin mo? Last na. Minsan lang naman eh. Ba- bago mo yun buksan, bro. Bago mo buksan, minsan lang. Ayan. Pag nakakaapat ka na, hindi, last na, bro. Last na. Last na. Super last na. Eh, ang sarap eh. Super duper last. Super duper last promise. Until, ubus na. We cannot stop. We cannot stop the the evilness. And when the when the Pharisees, the religious leaders are reading this, galit na galit na sila dun sa mga tenants. Parang, ano ba namang klaseng mga tao yan? Ano ba namang klaseng mga walang puso yan? And then they're beginning to find out the deviation, the difference from Isaiah 5. Kasi may iba na sa mga element ng story ng Isaiah 5. Biglang may servants na, may tenants na, may wicked tenants. And they figured out, again, this is the parable na immediately alam na nila ibig sabihin. God is the owner. Israel is the vineyard. Tenants are the religious leaders na pinagtiwalaan ng Diyos. Mga priests, pinagtiwalaan na palaguin ang, 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 ang the, the Christianity, the religion, Judaism. Right? But they, they, they legalized it and they corrupted it and nagkaroon ng politika and nagkaroon ng pera and all. Who are the servants? The prophets. Na sinesend ni God ulit-ulit into this unrepentant nation. And yes, they had, they killed them as well. Si Isaiah po was sawn in two. Nilagare. Sige, ngayon natin kantayin yung Take my life, Lord, it is yours. Makakanta ba ba natin yan? Um, nilagari. Sa dalawa. Si Isaiah. Si Jeremiah was placed in a pit, in a miry pit, and then stoned to death. Binagyan siya ng maraming mga marijuana. Ganun. Stone daw eh. Hanggang sa namatayin sa kaadikan. Yung iba parang, Hindi, binato. Hanggang mamatay, stone to death. Uh, Amos and Elijah were threatened and had to flee because of death threats. Micah was slugged in the face. Pambihira yun. Mukha. Brah! Zechariah was murdered in the temple. Kapansin niyo yung buhay ng mga prophets. and yung nation ng Israel, God will always send oppression. Because kung walang oppression, if everything is okay, hindi tayo tatawag sa Diyos. So God will send a nation, Assyria, Babylon, to, to, to captivate or capture the Israel. They will ask for help. Parang awa mo na, Lord! Tulungan mo kami! And God will send a prophet or a judge 
to help them, pray for them, matanggal yung sin, matanggal yung curse. And then, when everything is fine already, okay na kami, what are gonna do? They're gonna turn back on this prophet and kill them. Again, when do we reject authority? When it's not favorable to us anymore. Pagka hindi na pabor sa'yo, ayaw mo na rin yung prophet. Alam nyo, in so many ways, ganyan din hanggang ngayon. Pastors are being mocked. Churches are being ridiculed for our values, for our uh, standard. Pero kita mo yung covid Tingnan nyo, ah, give you an example. Tingnan nyo yung 2020, yung katindihan ng COVID. Eh lahat alam yung Waymaker eh. ba? Diba? Kahit mga hindi Christian, Waymaker, miracle worker. Okay, kailangan eh, may COVID eh. Pastor, please pray. Okay, of course. Eh ngayon, ano na naman? Pagkatawa na naman mga pastor. Um, and I, 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 I want to thank you. No? I want to thank you because I don't feel this in victory. Thank you, sa online church. I'm not, uh, we're not asking for respect and honor. No, we're not. Honor God. Let's honor God. Okay, but thank you. Kasi ramdam namin yun. Kasi sa ibang church, yung pastor yung kawawa, yung pastor yung pinakamahirap, yung pastor yung pinagtatawanan, yung pastor yung, yung walang alam. In, in society, Um, someone told me, I was really hurt by the comment. Sabi niya, what's your job? Sabi kong ganun, a pastor. Go find a real job. Sabi niya sa akin, hello. <laughs> in my mind, in my mind that played really, really good. Okay. I insulted talaga ako. Okay. Turn the other cheek. <laughs> find a real job. That's not a real job. Eh, kung ikaw kaya gumawa ng ginagawa ko, ganun talaga sa isip ko. And not realizing the curses they are harboring against themselves. Just like the prophets. The Lord, the God of their fathers, sent word to them through His messengers, the prophets, again and again. Say again and again. Because he had pity on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked God's messengers, despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets until the wrath of the Lord was aroused against his people and there was no remedy. Last. At ito na yung climax ng ating story. Pakiclick, please. The murder of the son in the vineyard. He had still one other, a beloved son. May huling baraha pa. And at this point, Just like us, parang kinakabahan tayo. Kinakabahan ba kayo? Para parang, wag niyo isi. Oy, sir, please. Owner, please. Don't send your son. You knew what happened the past few times. No, don't, please. I can feel the reader's emotions here shifting from galit doon sa mga tenants to the worry. and fear for the son's life. You saw what happened the, 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 the last times that you sent someone. Not your son, please. Not only son, beloved son. One and only son. I can hear the, uh, when Jesus was, was being baptized, Was God is being so proud of him. Alam niyo ba nung time na yun, wala pang ginagawa si Jesus? Start pala ng ministry niya. Wala pa, wala pa siyang pinapagaling, wala pa siyang pinoproclaim, hindi pa siya nagpe-preach. Anong sabi ni God? 
Ito yung anak ko. Yung anak ko, nag-iisang anak ko na mahal na mahal ko. I am very pleased with him. So pleased with him. The question is, and this breaks my heart, why did he still do it? Bakit sinen pa rin niya? Yung anak niya. Kahit alam niyang mamamatay yung anak niya. Sabi ng isang theologian, I'm so careful to mention this, but I'm gonna mention it. Sabi niya, the blessed idiocy of grace. Does it make sense? I'm not gonna send you will for you. I have three kids, but I'm not gonna do it. Um, hindi ko babawasan yung mga for you. Sino ka ba? And you're gonna murder my son? But yet he did. Question is why? You should not be surprised. John 3.16 For God so loved the world, He gave His only Son. So that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. He sent Him to them, saying, They will respect my Son. But those tenants said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. This is foolishness. Alam nyo, sin makes us stupid. Hindi tayo nag-iisip. Pagkakasalanan, hindi tayo nag-iisip. Nabububing talaga tayo. Tingnan nyo, sa tingin ba nila, makakawala sila dyan? Sa tingin ba nila, tingnan nyo parang, ah, pag napatay na namin to, wala nang maghahabol sa atin. Sa atin na yung vineyard, pati yung mana niya. Paano mapupunta sa yung mana niya? Hindi ka na anak. Ikaw yung nag-iisip. And yet, that's sin, that what sin does to us. Kaya nga, we're willing to trade off everything, our, our children, our wife, para sa isang gabi with this girl. Kaya nga, willing tayong magnakaw and all and, and, and destroy integrity because we're not thinking right. Do you understand? If, if we're in that sin, And they took him and killed him and threw him out. The vineyard. Shocking. Hindi man lang nila nilibing. Threw him out like garbage for the birds to eat. Jesus asked the question, what will the owner of the vineyard do? Again, they thought they can get away with it. Okay, sa amin na to. Really? So sa tingin nyo, hindi ka namin babalikan? Together with officials and policemen and to punish you for what you have done? What will the owner of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the tenants and give the vineyard to others. Give the vineyard to others. Um, here's our problem. We want the blessing, but not the loss attached to it. The tenants. Daling ka usap sa una, no? Sige, sige. O, oh, sisweldo ako kayo, 50-50. Game, game kami dyan, sir. Kayang-kaya namin yan. Pero naniningil na, ah, ba't mo kami sinisingil? Grabe ka naman. This is the same mindset. Saying God, saying to God na, if God is loving, why did He create hell? Kung totoo ang mapagmahal ng Diyos, de sana walang, walang, walang hell. Wala, ha? Ayaw mo nang... 
Gusto mo yung blessing pero ayaw mo ng kaparusahan. Ayaw mo ng law. Gusto mo ng financial blessing pero ayaw mo mag-tithe. Tuwang-tuwa ka sa worship service. You love what people are doing. We're thankful for the music team. We're thankful for the online team there. Thank you so much. The ushers. And yet, you still don't want to volunteer. Sayang oras ko. Kasi ko pa yung may reklamo. Medyo sintunado yung... Ayaw mo ng responsibilities. Gusto mo yung blessing, ayaw mo ng authority. Kaya ikaw, tumigil ka muna sa pagluluto mo. Sinasabay mo na naman eh. Pinatigil ko na nga yung kaninang namamalan, siya ikaw naman nagluto ka. At 12.30 na po. Oo nga, pero konti na lang. Ayaw natin yung authority niya. Gusto natin yung freedom, pero ayaw natin yung punishment. Gusto natin yung mga preaching like, God will bless you tremendously. Woo! Prosperity. Woo! Pagka sinabing, suko natin lahat sa Diyos. Ah, grabe yung pastor. Maangas. Maangas. Eh, nung last week, eh, masaya ka. We want the Lord, but not, uh, we want the Savior, but not the Lord. Chapter 2 ng 1 to 1. Pwede bang skip natin yan? Naghahanap ka ng chapter na blessing. Meron ba dito na God will bless me chapter? Remember, nung nagpray ka ng salvation, anong sabi mo? Lord, I accept you as my personal Savior and Lord. And yun, pray. Together with it, His values, His laws, His desire for you, all of this. Gusto mo lang na hindi ka mapunta sa impyerno, kaya pag nagpipreach kayo ng gospel, please wag lang ganun yung benta mo. Gusto mo bang pag namatay ka, punta ka sa langit? Wag lang ganun. Hindi yun mamahalin si God ng totohanan. Kasi He's just using Jesus as a key to escape hell and judgment. But the truth is, Wala. Tingnan mo, pagka when things get stuff, he will leave. The most important stone, sabi ni God, ni Jesus Christ, the stone that the builders rejected, as I call the music team, has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. The builders, when they're making a building, pipili sila ng cornerstone. Pipili sila. Ano kaya yung pinakamagandang cornerstone? And these guys, they miss the point. The tenants, they miss the point. The most important stone in our lives. Guys, God's gonna build you up. God's gonna make you in this very big house who can withstand storm. who can withstand the challenges in life. Okay? God's gonna make you into a house with many rooms. And, and just like every room in a house, may purpose kada room, may study room, may bedroom. God wants to give you a purpose. God wants to give you a plan. God wants to give you a direction. God wants you to not just survive, but thrive in this world. To give you value, to give you a mission. Hindi ka lang nabubuhay para lang kumain every day. God's gonna build you up. God's gonna build this family up. God's gonna build this church up. But who is the most important stone? It's Jesus Christ. Sadly, the most important stone gets rejected every time. Bakit? Again, pag di na favorable sa'yo. May work ka na on a Sunday. Mabagal yung internet. Ay, mabagal yung internet. Hindi na lang service Pag wala ka ng pera, kapag may sakit ka na, He was rejected for us. 
so we can experience the love. You see the Father, the forbearance, yung ulit, 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 ulit. The patience to send and send and send and send and send and send messengers. I pray that it's about time to stop the rejection. Isaiah 53 verse 3, I'll end with this verse. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turn our backs on him and look the other way. He was despised and we did not care. Ang punta kami sa Israel, ang iyak ako ng iyak, hindi doon sa pinako siya sa krus. Paiyak ako ng iyak doon sa Nung na-arrest siya in the Gethsemane, we went to the Caiaphas house, the high priest. Buo pa. Tapos may dungeon. Tapos na-imagine ko si Jesus Christ mag-isa doon for overnight. Kasi tomorrow, dadalhin siya kay Pilate. He was there alone. He was despised. He was rejected. His friends who said, Mamamatay ako kasama mo, wapang buhay! denied him three times. No one was there. No one, wa- no one even said, Hul- kung hulin mo siya, sasamaan ko siya sa bilangguan. No one. He was rejected, just like the tenants rejected the son, and we keep rejecting him still every single day. We don't want his authority. But I pray that there's gonna be a change of heart for us today. Can you close your eyes? Close your eyes. We will pray. Online church, close your eyes. Lord, we repent. Search our hearts. We don't want to be the servants, the tenants na may may growing sin and evilness inside of us. And like what I've said, this, this cannot, this won't stop as long as we're hiding it, Lord. I pray, Lord, if there are sins, unresolved sins, if issues in our life, we will expose it in the light. Kung meron kaming relationships that are, are, are not godly, kung meron kaming mga secret lives, Lord, I pray we will expose it to the light, Lord, as early as now because it's gonna consume us. Lord, I pray that we will accept and not reject the most important stone, which is the cornerstone, and that's you. If you're here today and you're saying, Lord, help me accept this cornerstone to be the foundation of my life, the most important piece of my life. And I will say yes rather than reject. Say yes sa mga pinapagawa ni Lord sa akin. Say yes to make disciples. Say yes mag-volunteer. Say yes to, to, to be generous. Say yes to, to preach the gospel. Say yes to this impossible task. If that's you, raise your hands. Saying, Lord, tulungan mo ako kasi hindi ko ko kaya on my own. I'm saying yes. And I'm not gonna reject God. Come on, raise your hands. Thank you for these hands, Lord. Help us. Online church, raise your hands. If that's you. Salamat, Lord. Salamat, God, kasi ikaw lang yung stable. Ikaw lang yung sure. Lord, uh, I pray hindi kami matakot. I pray hindi kami mag-compromise. I pray na hindi namin protektahan yung aming mga uh, teritoryo, sarili namin mga, mga desires, Lord. And pag nagkikis-kisa na yung dalawang values, we let go, we reject you. Thank you, Lord. I pray, God, that you will give us the grace to say yes to everything that you want us to do. The, thing, the places you want us to go, 
the, the, the task that you want us to achieve, Lord. Salamat, Lord. We thank you because you are stable and you are sure. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.